<laughs> a seven-year-old and his four-year-old brother are upstairs in their bedroom. The seven-year-old is explaining that it is high time that the two of them begin swearing. When his little brother responds enthusiastically, the seven-year-old says, When we go downstairs for breakfast this morning, I'll say hell and you say ass. The four-year-old happily agrees. As the two boys are seating themselves at the breakfast table, their mother walks in and asks her older son what he would like to eat for breakfast. The seven-year-old replies, Aw, oh, hell, Mom, I'll just have some Cheerios. The surprised mother reacts quickly and whacks him one. The boy runs upstairs, bawling and rubbing his behind. With a sterner note in her voice, the mother then asks her younger son, And what would you like to eat for breakfast? I don't know, the four-year-old blubbers, but you can bet your ass it's not going to be Cheerios. <laughs> One Sunday morning, a little girl in her Sunday best was running so she wouldn't be late for church. As she ran, she kept praying, Dear God, please don't let me be late for church. Please don't let me be late for church. And as she was running, she tripped and fell. When she got back up, she began praying again. Please, God, don't let me be late for church. But don't shove me either. <laughs> Two little boys got into the grocery store. One is nine, one is four. The nine-year-old grabs a box of tampons from the shelf and carries it to the register for checkout. The cashier asks, Oh, these must be for your mom, huh? The nine-year-old replies, No, not for my mom. Without thinking, the cashier responded, Well, they must be for your sister then. The nine-year-old responded, Nope, not for my sister either. The cashier had now become curious. Oh, not for your mom and not for your sister. Then who are they for? The nine-year-old says, They're for my four-year-old little brother. The cashier is surprised. Your four-year-old brother? The nine-year-old explains. Well, yeah. They say on TV, if you wear one of these, you can swim or ride a bike. My little brother can't do either of those things. <laughs> Mom, don't freak out, but I'm in the hospital. Peter, you've been a doctor for over eight years now. Please stop starting every phone conversation with that. <laughs> A boy and a girl were in a doctor's waiting room. The little girl was softly sobbing. Why are you crying? asked the little boy. I'm here for a blood test and they're gonna cut my finger, said the girl. When he heard this, the little boy started to cry. Why are you crying? asked the girl. The boy looked at her worriedly and said, I'm here for a urine test. <laughs> Daddy, I fell in love and I want to date this awesome girl. That's great, son. Who is she? It's Wendy, the neighbor's daughter. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. I have to tell you something, son, but you must promise not to tell your mother. Wendy is actually your sister. The boy is naturally bummed out, but a couple of months later, Daddy, I fell in love again and she is the one. That's great, son. Who is she? It's Penny, the other neighbor's daughter. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. Penny is also your sister. This went on a couple of times and the son was so mad he went straight to his mother crying. Mom, I'm so mad at Dad. I fell in love with six girls, but I can't date any of them because Daddy is their father. The mother hugs him affectionately and says, My love, you can date whoever you want. Don't listen to him. He is not your father. <laughs> An old man lived alone in Idaho. He wanted to spade his potato garden, but it was very hard work. His only son, Baba, who used to help him, was in prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son and described his predicament. Dear Baba, I'm feeling pretty bad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my potato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to be digging up a garden plot. If you were here, all my troubles would be over. I know you would dig the lot for me. Love, Dad. A few days later, he received a letter from his son. Dear Dad, for heaven's sake, Dad, do not dig up that garden. That's where I buried the bodies. Love, Baba. At four the next morning, FBI agents and local police showed up and dug up the entire area without finding any bodies. They apologized to the old man and left. That same day, the old man received another letter from his son. Dear Dad, go ahead and plant the potatoes now. That's the best I could do under the circumstances. Love, Baba. <laughs> Honey, can I ask you something? Of course, sweetie, what is it? Will you ever forget me? Of course not, I will never forget you. Knock, knock, who's there? See, I knew you would forget me. <laughs> a while back, an eccentric billionaire offered a huge price to anyone who could show him a blue giraffe. This is how people of different countries went about the task. The British argued thoroughly whether such a creature could really exist. The Germans went to the library and looked up literature to see if such creatures really existed. Americans dispatched troops all over the world to search for one. The Japanese made blue giraffes through iterative genetic experimentation and the meticulous breeding program. The Chinese went and got some blue paint. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> a young man named John received a parrot as a gift. Problem was, the parrot had a bad attitude and an even worse vocabulary. Every word out of the bird's mouth was rude, obnoxious, and laced with profanity. Finally, John was fed up and he yelled at the parrot. The parrot yelled back, John shook the parrot, and the parrot got angrier and even more rude in desperation. John threw up his hands, grabbed the bird, and put him in the freezer. For a few minutes, the parrot squawked and kicked and screamed. Then suddenly, there was total quiet. Not a peep was heard for over a minute. Fearing that he'd killed the parrot, John quickly opened the door to the freezer. The parrot calmly stepped out onto John's outstretched arm and said, I believe I may have offended you with my rude language and actions. I am sincerely remorseful for my inappropriate transgressions, and I fully intend to do everything I can to correct my rude and unforgivable behavior. John was stunned at the change in the bird's attitude, and he was about to ask the parrot what had made such a dramatic change in his behavior. The bird continued, Can I ask you, what did that chicken do?